In mid-December, 15 of the strongest emigrants, five women, nine men, and a boy of 12, resolved to make another attempt to break out. An old Vermont farmer, Franklin Graves, fashioned crude snowshoes from oxbows and rawhide. On December 16th, with William Eddy and the Indians Lewis and Salvador in the lead, they started out for the summit. They took six days starvation rations apiece. They called themselves the Forlorn Hope. With each step, they sank a few inches into the 20-foot drifts, but the crude snowshoes buoyed them up. It took two grueling days to scale the summit. Once over the pass, the sun began to blind them. On the sixth day, their food ran out. Charles Stanton, too blind and weak to carry on, urged his exhausted friends to go on without him. He was last seen sitting in the snow, calmly smoking his pipe. By the ninth day out, they were hopelessly lost, high in the California mountains. On Christmas Eve, it began to snow again. What to do, we did not know. Some of those who had children and families wished to go back. But the two Indians said they would go on. I told them I would go too. For to go back and hear the cries of hunger from my brothers and sisters was more than I could stand. I would go as far as I could, let the consequences be what they might. Mary Graves. Darkness came, and somehow they managed to light a fire. They had been three days without food of any kind, and most of them were far gone. Even in their delirium, they knew they were dying. Even the wind seemed to hold its breath as the suggestion was made that were one to die, the rest might live. Then the suggestion was made that lots be cast, and whoever drew the longest slip should be the sacrifice. The slips of paper were prepared, and Patrick Dolan drew the fatal slip. No one had the heart to kill him. About 11 o'clock, the storm increased to a perfect tornado, and in an instant blew away every spark of fire. The company were now engaged in imploring God for mercy and relief. That night's bitter cries, anguish and despair never can be forgotten. Somehow, William Eddy got his dying companions to sit together in a ring and pulled blankets over them. A canopy of snow quickly covered the starving group. Antonio, a Mexican teamster, died. Franklin Graves was next. He died in the arms of his daughters, Mary and Sarah. Patrick Dolan went insane and had to be held down by his companions. At last, he slipped into a coma and died. Twelve-year-old Lem Murphy lay shuddering, all but dead. It stopped snowing. William Eddy crawled out of the white tomb where the dead and dying immigrants lay and managed to relight the fire. Someone cut the flesh from the arms and legs of Patrick Dolan. They roasted the meat and ate it, averting their faces from each other and weeping. Only the two Indians, Lewis and Salvador, refused to eat. 
the hideous food revived them. The ten surviving members of the forlorn hope butchered what remained of their four dead friends, wrapped and carefully labeled the pieces so that no one had to eat their kin, and staggered on through the wilderness, cursing Lansford Hastings. Three days later, there was again nothing left to eat. William Foster proposed murdering the Indians for food. William Eddy tried to talk him out of it, then told Lewis and Salvador of the white man's plan. The Indians stood disbelieving for a moment, then silently disappeared into the snowy woods. Monday, December the 21st. Milt got back last night from the Donner's camp. Sad news. Jacob Donner, Sam Shoemaker, Joseph Reinhardt, and James Smith are dead. The rest of them in a low situation. Snowed all night. Thursday, December 31st. Last of the year. May we, with God's help, spend the coming year better than the past, which we propose to do if Almighty God will deliver us from our present dreadful situation. Which is our prayer if the will of God sees it fitting for us. Amen. Freezing hard every night. Looks like another storm. Snowstorms are dreadful to us. Patrick Breen. On January 10th, 1847, the United States Marines took Los Angeles from the Mexicans. In all but name, California now belonged to the United States. With the fighting over, James Reed rushed to San Francisco to raise money and men for the relief of his family and friends. At sunset on January 17th in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada, Harriet Ritchie heard a knock on the door of her family's cabin. In the doorway stood a bleeding skeleton of a man. In a faint voice, he asked if he could have some bread. Harriet burst into tears and helped William Eddy into bed. The six other survivors of the forlorn hope lay a short way up the trail. Only two of the ten men had made it through. All five women had survived. When he was well enough to speak, William Eddy told a hellish story. He spoke of the camp of death and of wandering 18 days more lost in the deep mountain snows. Of Sarah Fosdick, who had to watch her husband die, then see his heart roasting on a stick. Of the bloody footprints that led them to where the Indians, Lewis and Salvador, who had fled as far as they could, were lying side by side in the snow, too weak to move. How William Foster, insane, shot each of the men through the head, and how the starving survivors used the murdered men for food. The alarm went out. February 3rd. They gave the alarm that the people would all die without assistance. It was two weeks before any person would consent to go. 